Hey! Metroid Dread is right around the corner. It's like a month and a half away now, and I I'm gonna be honest, I'm pretty sure a lot of you probably don't even know what Metroid is, let alone what Metroid Dread is gonna be all about. And trust me, I get it. There's a lot of Metroid games, and you're not gonna be able to play them all in a month and a half. Maybe you are, maybe you're not. But, what if I told you that I have played all of them and I have access to all of them too? So, why play them when you can just watch me play? Today, I'm going to be tackling where the journey all began for Metroid. That's right. I'm going to be playing Metroid for the original Nintendo Entertainment System. The original Metroid released in 1986. Bet you didn't know that. That's probably before your dad was born. So... <laughs> Ooh, and there it is. The old title. Now, Metroid's a game that I've actually played a bunch as a kid. I played this game back when I was like five or six, because we had an NES back then. And, you know, this, this game is... It's very, very fun. Very old, though. Very dated. Oh, look at this game. My buttons aren't working. All right, that should be a little bit better. And look at that. The classic somersault, still in full force. And what do we got over here? We've got the Morph Ball. This is where it all began, after all. You might recognize this. The very iconic. Look, you can't quite make it back up. So what do you have to do? You gotta press your buttons and learn how to, how to do this stuff. Ah. My buttons are backwards. That should be a little bit better. Now I'll be able to shoot just how I remember it. With the B and the A buttons. I'm playing on keyboard today, but don't let that fool you. This game was made for old hardware. Now I don't have the hardware personally, but if I did, imagine. I'm a bit of a cheater. When I was a kid, my NES controller had a turbo button on it, and I would use it to tase the crap out of these enemies. What can they do? There's something up there, trust me. Ah, oh, watch out. Yeah, you can make that guy jump. He'll jump when you jump. There's a lot of tricks in this game. And here we are. The classic climb. This is the part that most people have... Most people struggle with in the original Metroid. And you know why? It is actually kind of difficult. This is where you really have to learn how to time your jumps. And also where you have to learn not to shoot every enemy. If you can avoid shooting some enemies and killing some enemies, you're going to have a much easier time in the game. Because not all of them need to die. Now up here... My, my pea shooter's a little bit weak looking, isn't it? We should go do something about that, what do y'all think? Well, let me tell you what I think. I think that we should definitely go and get that long beam. I've, I've played so much Metroid Zero Mission, I remember exactly where to go and get the long beam. It's right over here, it's the first thing you get in the whole game. Uh oh. So let's go ahead and get our long beam and... You know, who even needs the long beam anyway? There's actually a limit to how many shots you can have on the screen anyway. You can only have three shots. Now, there was a lot of limitations on what the NES could handle, especially for developers back in the day. So when you look at this game, you see there's no background and the music's relatively... Like, it's nostalgic for sure, but this you're not really going to hear a lot of this in Metroid Dread, that's for sure. Oh. And look at that. The first upgrade. I don't remember how to... Oh, and look at that. The classic look of equipping the missiles. It was so cool, and I'm surprised that they never really brought that back for any of the future games. Anyway, we've got our missiles. We're gonna head this way into... For a lot of players, one of the most frustrating areas because of these guys, the Waver. 
Now the waver is an iconic Metroid enemy. And look what they do. They wave up and down and all around. They're a real threat. But they're not a threat for me because I have the iconic turbo button. Now you've got to watch out for stuff in this game. You've got to watch out. Back in the day, this game was kind of scary for some people because of the dark atmosphere in some of the lower areas. And of course, the insidious Metroid threat. But we've got those missiles capable of taking out an enemy in one hit. Very powerful. We're gonna go under this guy real quick. Just completely owned him. Wrecked. As you can see though, I've, I've only been hit a few times, but I'm not getting much health back. Never mind, I just got a lot of health back. And oh, what's this? Speaking of health, we've got this here. The energy tank. Now go ahead and look at my health up there. Boom! We got a square. Now what that square means is that when I run out of health, I get my health back again. And it's infinite. It's not infinite. But it can feel like it's infinite. Not in this game though. Oh, I remember this. These are another iconic item. The bomb. Oh, it's so easy to dice through them with the missiles. And another one with the missiles. It's so easy. What's down here? Nothing. Now, I can't really get up as I- Ow! Ow, I got- Completely wrecked. <laughs> Get a load of that guy. Ah! I remember where it is. Ah! Ow! One of the great things about Metroid games is their emphasis on secrets. That was kind of rude. I couldn't even do anything about that guy. I need missiles. Oh, speak of the devil? Don't speak of that guy. Ow. They're so rude. And look at that. You just need some missiles and you'll be able to get through and get your first upgrade. Oh. Alright, let's blow up this guy. Get him out of the way and... You freeze them, they stay frozen. Boom! Look at that. These guys don't even have enough health to stay frozen. But you can hit them with some classic strategies in this game. Like, look at this. Frozen. Stuck. Nothing will save you. Uh-oh. Look at that trick. Now, I'm gonna show you all what that trick really was. So, I can't really get up there, so instead I place a bomb, and then I jump off of the explosion. Boom. Boom. Uh, that works too. Now that I can freeze people, that also means I can stand on people. In theory. I guess I could also just fall through people, that's cool too. Boom. 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 And then... Boom. Do we... We don't quite make it? Oh! So close. Ah! Ah! But we made it! Ooh, and we get into the green area over here. Jump over that guy. Very annoying fella. Oh, and another energy tank. One shot, one kill.
Oh, what? I can't make it. Unless, wait a minute. I might have a plan, but it's gonna require a little bit of thinking. Oh, wow, he's so annoying. I can't do anything! Okay. Alright. So you can freeze that guy and then stand on him? So what if we take that principle... ...and move it over there? Now that is what I call a pro move. Another wavy guy? Is that it? Of course it's not it. We've also got tricks! But now how am I going to get up there? That isn't quite the answer. Maybe a little bit of this action? Oh, I aimed up! I need to get that boost just right. Try this again. Oh, I'm not getting the jump at all. Okay, that was so close. Oh, that could work! I want to get up there. We're in there! Yo, that's so cool. See, even the original Metroid game had this kind of stuff. Sequence breaking. Another feature that they said is going to be available in Metroid Dread. And we got a red door over here. And what do we have in here? The ball? Oh. That's the various suit right there. Oh, and look how cool it looks when you turn on the missile. Looks like that's all the time that I have for today. For Metroid. And yes, I'll be back again with another episode tomorrow. So if you want to see more of it, be sure to click subscribe. I'm also going to be doing all sorts of other different Metroid related content on the road to Metroid Dread. I hope to see you there. When I, uh, when I stream Dread, when it comes out on October the 8th. So, uh, yeah. I'll see you next time, and, uh, bye.